everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Deanna and you're watching OKD. So this is my first video in about six weeks. So this will be a little bit of an orchid and life update. So I will put a timestamp in the description below for those of you who just want to skip right to the orchid stuff. So for those OG subscribers, you'll know that I was struggling with uploading for a little while, even before, you know, my last update in early January. But it has been a very deliberate break, um, basically since around August last year. It's just been one life thing after another that's had to take priority. Then in October, November, I had my own medical issues. I needed a couple of surgeries. And then just when I thought things were getting back on track a little bit, Frankie had his airway issues, which almost ended with us nearly having to put him down but thank goodness there was a good outcome to that and he's now doing really really well but along with those stresses summer slowly crept up on us and as it does every year the heat just considerably increases the workload in terms of awkward watering uh, but this summer was particularly abnormal like it usually remains fairly humid still in Brisbane but this summer was really hot dry and windy and we just had absolutely no rain for months and months like I think 2019 would have had to be one of our driest years in Australia maybe on record so I couldn't help myself I had to google it and check that it's actually true 2019 was the driest year in Australia on record with 278 millimeters of rain which the last record was like in 1902 and it was 315 millimeters so like way way below even the lowest record ever which I mean it's insane and I'm sure you've heard all about the bushfire down the east coast of Australia this year so I'm really lucky I wasn't affected by them but down in New South Wales, uh, South Australia and Victoria it was just absolutely devastating like 34 people were killed I mean countless homes lives just destroyed 20 million hectares were just decimated and like 1 billion animals died so just absolute tragedy so my heart completely uh, wholly goes out to um, everyone that was affected by those bushfires so I guess just coming back to the orchids um, something I never thought would happen happened and it was that like not only could I not keep up with looking after the orchids but I just lost the drive to do it like I just didn't feel like it I didn't want to which sounds really strange and I feel so much guilt over it but you know it's not like I didn't water them for three months straight or anything but I did not keep up like not even close to what was necessary like thank goodness I had set up a system so I could water them in situ I mean what I would have given for a set and forget system but you guys all know that orchids aren't really set and forget plants so yeah it was a little bit brutal but basically survival of the fittest here and um, up until January when finally things started to return a little bit back to normality I lost quite a few orchids um, especially younger ones seedlings um, it was worsened by pests like mealybugs and scale which took over some of the weaker plants especially when they were particularly dehydrated but you know honestly like my mood was low and they were doing badly and I, I didn't sometimes even want to look at them like I didn't have the will or energy to pick things up um, until probably like the first couple of weeks of January uh, when I had the time to focus back on myself instead of other things that were happening so yeah with all that said this year my orchid passion has finally naturally found its place in my heart again in my routine so on the whole they have been recovering and it has been quite interesting to see which ones were the most resilient given my neglect so I'm going to give you guys like a series of updates over the next while as I slowly start to get back into posting on Orchid and we are going to start right here on my upstairs balcony so I have reshuffled again. I reshuffled last week. I just thought that things needed a little bit of a refresher because the sun is moving again and I get a lot of afternoon sun down here now and much less sun in that corner where all the plants originally were. So the plants here get moved in winter for those of you that don't know and that'll probably happen around May. So another three months up here and I'll have to do another reshuffle but um, I really like the way things are organized at the moment. Um, it's really a pleasure to look at it when 
it's all nicely arranged and organized but all the summer blooming fowls are now inside and I've moved some of the dendrobiums out here. So I'll start over here. These dendrobiums were moved from inside to out here. They're all doing pretty well. Uh, they probably got a bit more attention because they were inside and that landing is just outside my bedroom. But yeah, the little watering in situ is working really well as you can see. I guess the one downside is that I have a lot of roots now coming out of the bottom of the pot um, and sticking to the bottom of the decorative container. So when I do have to remove them, I often break a couple of roots. Clearly they've got enough if they're coming out the bottom of the pot so yeah no flower spikes here that I can see but they're all doing generally very well along this little wall you can see a couple of spikes here but in particular I'm going to point out this one this is of course my Cyclopsis Mendenhall Hildos which I'm hoping will open up any day now it's the very first bloom for her I'm super super excited you guys um, who have followed me for a while will know that I have had this plant for quite some time waiting for it to bloom she looks spectacular doesn't she but um, actually during my little drought phase uh, she lost a new growth that was developing um, and you know what just quietly I'm actually happy that it decided to abort the new growth and focus on the flowering spike because I would have been very very upset if I lost this spike which I've been waiting for for a really really long time. The other Oncidiums aren't doing too badly. This is the Banfieldara Gilded Tower. This one you can see has a bit of a rotting back bulb there but it's actually been like that for a couple of months and I haven't done anything. It's not spreading so I will just get rid of it with my next repotting working on two new growths there and this is my Miltasia Phoenix rising white light with very healthy looking spikes there. So we'll start from this side because the afternoon sun is slowly creeping in and it's just way too hot to film out here with direct sun. It's already like over 30 degrees Celsius. So I've got a few more bigger Oncidiums over here. This is the Catatante which has never actually bloomed for me. The smaller one which was mislabeled and Nellie Isla has. This one I have lost the label for and for the life of me I can't I can't remember what it is. If I find the name of it, I will put it somewhere on the screen. As you guys also know, I lost my database. So if I don't have a database and I don't have a tag, I actually often can't remember the name of the orchid. Sherry Baby is doing really well. It had one off season early spike. The spikes have been quite staggered. So you can see three there, but I can also see quite a few like smaller spikes developing there um, and I've noticed a couple more at the back as well. That is really tight in its pot. It has just quadrupled in size in two years so it'll desperately need an up potting after this flowering but I will just let it flower for now. So this next shelf we've got a big spike on Tristar Bouquet and a couple of advanced Catlayer seedlings here. This one is RLC Mari's Magic Chief Satisfaction and this is this is the Quarterback Cross with Medusa. Both doing well I just want to show you the roots because you can see that they all sort of come down the bottom now that I've got that little reservoir this one as well just a bit crazy you can see there's a little bit of water there and it absolutely loves it it's doing really well I've got two of these phalaenopsis type dendrobiums which I got a couple of years ago probably at my, I think it was my first orchid show I got these I think you can sort of see the progression of growth this one is a little bit of a later starter but you can see that growth is going to go well past the others and this one you can see the size of the next growth is a huge progression so they're really doing very well um, just one growth a year however on both of them next shelf we've got BC Maikai which is actually four plants it kind of fell apart when I got it off eBay and um, now the four plants have just taken over this little pot so it'll need a repot and splitting I might actually give away three of those in a giveaway at some stage this is Falmarie you can see the little wrinkles on that newest leaf from my neglect of course this is Oncidium Heaven Scent Redolence first blooming it had like two random flowers come out first and they've fallen off and now it's sort of bloomed from the bottom and not much happening in terms of budding the top there but it's quite fragrant it smells pretty much exactly like the sherry baby and we have got a couple of other cat layers here down here we've got a couple of my oncidians this is the howiara got a doritas cat layer oncidium very very random the seedlings and since we're down here got a couple of the neophonetians which are bringing out some new growths there Ooh, look at that 
Got a little spike developing on that near Phoenicia and some seedling fowls doing quite well. And this is my Dendrobium samurai which I had to put in quite a heavy pot because it's just completely leaning to one side. So it does need a repot. Um, it is on its second round of growths for this spring summer. It is pretty big as you can see now but no blooms but these growths currently working on are still leafing out as you can see so they're still growing and I'm not sure if this is a spring bloomer or not so we'll just have to wait and see. Another shelf here of a few neophonishes I've checked them out they've all just got new little growths developing although I'm not sure if that there I think that's just a new growth. But yeah, they're all doing quite well. I don't really keep plants out here on this balcony that aren't doing okay and have a little bit of reserve. It, the conditions can get a little bit harsh out here. So up here as well, just a couple of Oncidiums. This one's one to show you, but this is RLC Toshi Aoki Starburst, which I repot nearly two years ago, June 2018, and it literally did absolutely nothing it grew roots but it didn't grow any new growth for what nearly two years and finally it is growing this new growth nearly got chucked away with my whole survival of the fittest mantra but saved itself just in time last of all this shelf up here looks a little crowded there's a few sheets happening so this is my pink diamond i've got two sheets this one feels a little bit fat there but this is actually a growth coming off this one so I'm not sure if this one will flower. I just brought this Latoria Dendrobium little green apples out here last week because it's just so massive um, and I thought it would like being outside and I've just noticed we've got a spike developing. Look, got a couple of little nubs here and there. Up here. It only just flowered a couple of months ago so this will be its second flush of blooms for the season. I was actually wondering why it wasn't just cracking on and putting out some new growths but yeah that's why it was storing some energy for a new blooming which is very very nice. Another first sheath in my care for Empress Worsley Roman Holiday. Chung Fong Small Cluster had a beautiful display with two spikes um, but the wind knocked it over one day last month and I lost the spikes but I do see another sheath there it's a pretty reliable bloomer it blooms like several times a year. Um, my twinkle suffered quite a bit from a scale infestation and now that I'm looking closely I can see bit more scale there which I'll have to clean up after this video. We've got my jungle hotspots with Lelia tenebrosa with a nice looking sheath there. Nice spotted cat layer if you couldn't tell by the leaves. Got a spike here from Ballara, Peggy Ruth Carpenter which has bloomed once for me before. Unfortunately this spike actually got caught. It was growing like underneath one of these tables so it's a little bit skew if but still intact luckily. And we've got a nice big fat sheath here for my Brunswick Bonanza, which is a massive pink cat layer, bigger than my hand. Uh, smells absolutely delicious. So hopefully that will bloom in spring. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this little balcony update. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more orchid videos. I can't completely guarantee the regularity that I'll be posting in the next few weeks but things are definitely settling down for me and I'm definitely finding my groove again particularly in terms of orchid gear and I want to update you on all the plants that are still around doing well doing not so well. Definitely when this psychopsis opens I want to show you so I will see you guys in my next video and I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Happy growing until we see you next time. Bye!